Welcome back, and I've got an absolutely fantastic experiment to show you today. What we're going to be looking at is Pascal's Law. So, I found this lovely piece of apparatus in the laboratory cupboards, and whoever made this needs to be praised for it, because it's a beautiful piece of glasswork, but I am literally terrified of knocking it over. So, let's see what this piece of apparatus was meant to demonstrate. Right, let's look at the apparatus we've got. So it's a piece of glassware where these vessels here, the five of them, are all connected together and they sit on a sort of wine glass base. And um, what's important is that we look at their shape. So this is a curvy pipe. This one's got quite a large wide reservoir, parallel sides, a funnel where we get more and more liquid at the top and uh, a pipe a bit like the one at this end, uh, parallel walled, but at an angle. And what we're going to do is we're going to pour some liquid into this and see what happens to the levels of the liquid inside the glass container. So let's move the apparatus a bit closer so you can see it a bit better. And what I've got here is some water with some fluorescent dye in so you can actually see the water in the container a bit better. And what I'm going to do is I'm slowly going to pour the coloured liquid into the funnel and uh, fill it up to about here. And I'd like to ask you what you think will happen in the other containers. So here goes, let's start pouring some in and see what happens. So you'll notice that the bottom part fills to begin with, but let's get it so there's a bit more water actually in the funnel shaped container. And then just give it a moment and you'll notice it oscillates a little bit. That's another interesting bit of physics. And then once it's settled down, you'll notice something rather strange. That all of the levels are identical in all of the vessels. And this is going to take rather a lot of explaining. Well, I wonder if that's what you thought would happen. It's really rather strange. What you notice is all the containers have the liquid at the same level. And to get you thinking about this, I will show you why it is so counterintuitive. Imagine the liquid in this large container. There's a large amount of it, and in the small one, there's a very little amount. So surely this container has a heavier amount of liquid in it than this one does. So what it should do is push down and squirt liquid out of this thin pipe. But it doesn't. They all find the same level. You might have heard the idiom, water always finds its own level. In other words, people of the same type always group together. And many people refer to this experiment as water finding its own level. So let's have a look at the explanation. And this was done by Pascal in around the 1640s, 1650s. Um, there was a chap called Stavin who did the work before him and actually uh, produced some pretty good physics to explain this. Um, he did it about 40, 50 years earlier, but um, he wrote in Dutch and um, his work was sort of not really noticed. Um, so we always refer to this as Pascal's Law. So now for an explanation, and I have had sleepless nights trying to think out how to explain this to you. Uh, I spent a bit of time on the internet to see what other people had done, which is something I don't normally do before making a video, and I noticed that everyone said, water finds its own level. Or they said, uh, pressure only depends upon the gravitational field strength, the density of the liquid, and the height of the column. Well, that's not an explanation. That just says what it is. It allows you to make predictions. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and explain why a heavier mass of liquid here doesn't go down further than a very light amount of liquid in this side. Right, you're ready. I'm going to try my best. So there are a few things we need to understand. Firstly, we're in a gravitational field, that due to the Earth, and so all of this apparatus feels the same G, the same gravitational field strength. So there isn't sort of weaker gravity on this side and stronger on that side. The next thing to realise is the liquid is all the same liquid. So um, I've got water in here just with fluorescent in it. 
Then we need to appreciate that liquids are not compressible. So we've got particles moving around in the liquid, but we can't really put extra liquid in and it crushes up like foam rubber. What it has to do is take up that volume and push other liquid out of the way. So we'll start with those points and then we'll see how that can be used to explain what happens. Now, I think you all know that pressure is force on area. And what Pascal basically said is if you take a liquid at any equal level, the pressure will be the same. And that pressure is transferred throughout the liquid. So any pressure felt at this point is the same as this point and this point, etc. So the pressure all the way along the bottom of this is the same. Now, the way to get your head around this is to think about this middle one. We've got a column of liquid here, which has a mass feels a force due, the, due to the gravitational field, so it has a weight, and that weight acts down on the rest of the liquid on a surface area equal to the size of the container, so we've got a pressure at that depth. Now, what would happen if we made the column of liquid narrower? And I wish I had one of these that was vertical. If that was the case, we'd have less liquid, less mass, and a lower weight, but we'd have a lower weight on a lower area. So we'd still have the same pressure. And I hope some of you can see that that's the key to why this level and these levels are the same. But now we've got to explain this funny shape and perhaps this one. So what's happening here is yes, we've got a wider amount of liquid. So we've got a greater mass of liquid at this level. We've therefore got a greater weight but think of that weight as being spread out over a greater area, so we're back to the same pressure. There are complex explanations about the force acting on the edge of the container because the edge is curved, so there's a vector nature to the force. Um, but the easiest way to think about it is a narrow column of liquid creates the same pressure as a narrow column of liquid here, and the same applies to there and there. But the main point of this experiment is to say two things. Firstly, that the pressure throughout a liquid is transferred throughout it. That's what Pascal was saying. And that the pressure at any level must be the same. So all of these will feel the same pressure at the top, the same pressure halfway down and at the bottom. So none of them can be higher than any other. And if you do the maths and what all the other things said on YouTube as an explanation to this, that pressure only depends upon rho g h, the density of the liquid, uh, the gravitational field strength, and the height of the liquid column. So these are all the same density, they're all in the same gravitational field strength, it's all the same liquid, and therefore they're all at the same height, and we've got the same pressure. Now, if I haven't baffled you completely and made a mess of the explanation, there's just one thing I'd like to add, and it's really obvious. That if the pressure in this container was larger, the, this would press down more, and this one would be lower, and these would be higher. And that clearly isn't the case. So the pressures at any level must be the same. Water always finds its own level. So I really hope you enjoyed that experiment and this beautiful piece of apparatus that's probably been in the cupboard for 60, 70, 80, maybe 100 years. And I hope I can get it back there clean without breaking it. Anyway, I look forward to doing another video soon and I'll see you then.